In fact, when I took office, there was about 27 days or so before Cranston was going to default on its debt. That hadn't happened in a long time in America. So I spent four years with the great people, uh, the citizens of Cranston, fixing it. Well, we're back on uh, in my childhood home on the street. We've met just some of the greatest people again. Uh, a lady came out of the home who I grew up basically living in, in her home and gave me a big hug. It's, it's bittersweet, it's sad. I mean, I had so many great memories here. Um, and, and we're back here and the yacht club down the street, which was in the, sort of the really dirty waters, burned to the ground. Uh, I just talked to a wonderful lady here who is living now in the house where across the street from where, where a childhood friend of mine, I haven't seen her in 30 years, talking about her. Uh, you know, Cranston is a real neighborhood. Within a neighborhood, you live in Edgewood. You don't even live in Cranston. So you even live in the north part of Edgewood, which is where I grew up. So people identify themselves in these very small things, which always kept the neighborhoods together and strong, that you knew people. And so you could walk down this street with a basketball, a tennis racket, um, and a baseball glove, and you wouldn't come back for the rest of the day, and you'd be drinking water out of someone's faucet, and everybody would be okay with it. Not everybody. Most everybody was okay with what we were doing. There was so many kids. Having five children was sort of like, that's nothing. We had 12 over there, six back there, seven over there. I mean, a lot of kids playing football, sort of like out of, you know, a 1960s movie, which is what it was. So, uh, anyway, uh, we're going to film some more, and we're going to get going.